The day is July 8th, 2009. With Pokemon Diamond and Pearl allowing the ability to connect on Wi-Fi and play against other players, I decided to record my very first match and upload it to my brand new YouTube channel. So I went ahead and threw together a random squad of rarely seen Pokemon and just wanted to see how it went. In today's video, I've recreated my very first competitive team and we're gonna see how it does in a Wi-Fi battle 13 years later. So with a brand new generation of Pokemon coming out in just a few days, I figured this is the best way we can put a nail in the coffin of Gen 4. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl has honestly been pretty fun for me, just because it's super nostalgic playing an old type of metagame, and it just brings me back to, you know, when I was a kid. So, shout out to Pokemon for allowing me to relive Generation 4 Wi-Fi battling, uh, but it's time to finally take one last victim in BDSP, with the very first team I ever used in a battle video. So from the look of my opponent's team, I'm really expecting them to lead off with that Sand Slash to get up Stealth Rock, so I decide to toss out everybody's favorite duck and try to get a Leaf Blade on it. Unfortunately, he ends up going with the Pointy Eevee, and that is not good uh, for me at all. So I'm going to have to kind of lose a little bit of momentum here, have to get the Farfetch'd out, because of course, Farfetch'd is an extremely valuable Pokemon that should be protected at all cost. But I do have the world's biggest sponge on my squad, which is the... The Reg Ice. This thing is specially defensive as absolute titties and is not going to be even really scratched by Jolteon. Now that actually did more damage than I was kind of expecting it to. However, I know this thing is going to want to switch because of course it's not going to be able to do really too much to me. So I can get a free Thunder Wave off as he does go for the Volt Switch. Now, this team is kind of specifically built to be annoying with Thunder Wave. I'm supposed to try to cripple things as much as possible so that way I can allow my slow-ass Pokemon to try to get some damage going. I have a very weird composition on this team and I, I really am going to rely on the Paralysis to try to slow things down, potentially get some free turns out of it. And that works actually pretty nicely because in comes an Arcanine who, you know, is an Iceberg's arch nemesis. However, it being paralyzed is actually not too bad. So this team does not have a whole lot of switch-ins into an Arcanine, but I do have a Golduck. So I decide to go into blue as he actually ends up switching back into the Jolteon expecting the Golduck to come in. So my ass is out here getting outplayed, read like a book, and I have to deal with pointy-ass Eevee once again. And this is kind of applying too much pressure to the point where I can't really afford to lose Golduck at this point. It's my best answer to the Arcanine. And I'm like, you know what? If it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm going right back into Regice. And Berg says, oh, hey, uh, pleasure meeting you again, I, I guess. So he actually ends up going for the Yawn, uh, which again is not good because I can't, I don't want Regice to be put to sleep. Um, I preferably don't want anything to be put to sleep, but... The good news is, I know that this Jolteon likely isn't going to stay in, and if he's going to go back into Arcanine, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going into the Titty Milk, and I'm going to try to set up some Stealth Rock, because clearly, there's a lot of switching shenanigans going on here, and I'm not appreciating that shit. So I bring out the old Blueberry Milk, everybody's favorite, as this thing does get the Volt Switch off. Now, I was expecting the Volt Switch damage to be a lot, of course, that is unfortunate to lose uh, on my Mill Tank, as I don't have Milk Drink on this thing, but here he ends up going into the Dragonite, and I know exactly... What my dude is thinking, he's thinking, I'm just going to go right for a Dragon Dance and pretty much just plow through uh, the entire team. But the cow is not going to let that shit happen, at least that easily. So he does go for the Dragon Dance here. Uh, it switches in freely without worrying about Stealth Rock, which is unfortunate because it keeps its multi-scale ability uh, super bulky when it has full health. So I both need to paralyze this thing and preferably get some damage on it to have a shot here. So... I go for the Thunder Wave, hoping he does not have a berry. Dragonite says, fuck you, I do have a berry, and does get rid of that para. So you really hate to see a Lumberry Dragonite, especially if you're using a team that is composed of random shit like me. Um, but we now, at least, I burned its Lumberry. So I decide, you know what, I'm going to actually end up going for the Body Slam here. I know that I can take an attack from this thing, and I want to weaken this thing to the point where I could potentially take it out later. So he goes for the Outrage, Titty Milk says, that shit hurts. But I'm still flopping titties out here, going right for the body slam, landing right on him. I do actually end up getting the para, and I'm able to break its multi-scale. So, shout out to Titty Milk, out here making things happen. You really hope for the, I hope for the body slam para. Uh, you never expect it, but you love to see it. So, now I actually get a free turn. I'm thinking I'm actually probably uh, faster than this thing, even though it's plus one. Miltank is quick as hell. She don't look like it, but Bessie can run. Uh, so I go for the Stealth Rock there, and now Miltank did pretty much exactly what it needed to do. I got up the Stealth Rock, I paralyzed the Dragonite, broke its multi-scale, and I'm out here just having myself a celebratory milkshake. So, um, he actually ends up getting fully paired that turn, which is fine by me. It just allows me another free turn to just go for a nice little Body Slam, get a little bit of extra chip damage 
uh, which is definitely necessary because Dragonite is scary as shit. So that actually does knock it down to around half and he gets confused. So this Dragonite is having an interesting time against Miltank here as he ends up going for another Dragon Dance. My dude is out here getting greedy. He's feeling like dancing again, which is fine by me. Um, I have the chance now to allow it to hit itself with the duckies on its forehead or just get fully paralyzed. So he's got like a 25% chance to attack here and I'm just gonna stay in. Miltank is pretty much burnt at this point. There's nothing I can do. Uh, but he does actually break through both status conditions and goes for the outrage, which is honestly disrespectful. Like what, what, what are these, what are these odds? You, I don't know. But uh, now I get a free switch into the Miss Magius. Now this thing is um, an interesting set. I've used this in the past. It is Choice Scarf. So I'm actually running Choice Band Pincer and Scarf Miss Maggie trying to catch people off guard. But uh, I do know that obviously with this thing being paralyzed, I can outspeed easily, toss a little gleam at his ass, and he actually lives it with literally one HP, snaps out of confusion, and then gets paralyzed. So I'm thinking I have no idea what the hell's going on around here, and I'm just glad that Mustard is still alive. I did not expect this thing to live the Dazzling Gleam. It must have some type of bulk investment, but one more does take care of it, and I am not getting swept by the derpy Dragon Boy today. So at this point, I have the benefit of him not realizing that I'm Choice Scarf yet, so I can still save the Miss Maggie for a potential kind of cheese uh, outspeed later, and he ends up going into Jolteon on the free switch. Of course, I don't want to stay in and just go for a Dazzling Gleam. No point in that, especially because I have the boy Sponge out here. So I bring in Berg, um, and I'm expecting a Bolt Switch here. He does end up going for the Discharge. I kind of have to... Uh, I'm basically forced to go into Red Ice against this thing. Um, and now is when I can start trying to make a couple interesting plays. So I know that he has that Arcanine in the back. I could either double switch, switch into my Golduck, or I just stay in and go for the Ancient Power expecting the Arcanine to come in. However, he ends up just staying and going for another Discharge as I just throw some Fossils at his ass, and I'm hoping for the Omni Boost, uh, because a Regice with an Omni Boost is actually insane, but I unfortunately do not get it. Um, but now I'm kind of at the point where I can't really afford to switch into anything. Nothing wants to come into Jolteon. And uh, it's looking like I'm pretty much going to have to trade Regice for this Jolteon. I wish I was actually a rest-talking Regice that would make this match a whole lot more interesting. That would actually be extremely nice. Um, being able to just basically burn this Jolteon and then get back to full health. But this Reggie is not sleepy. No naps for this lad. So here I decide to switch into Miss Maggie. I want to try to conserve the Reggie dice just a tiny bit uh, if possible. And I figure now's the time I'm going to end up using Miss Maggie. So... Uh, I know I can come in, take a discharge, but to my surprise, he ends up going for the yawn, which is extremely unfortunate. Literally, why would you expect me to switch there? There's there's just no shot, but I mean, that's annoying as I, I really cannot afford for Miss Maggie to be put to sleep, so I have to go end up switching right back into fucking Red Ice again. Luckily, there's no Stealth Rock on the field, or else Berg's ass would have been torn the hell up, but we're looking good. So he goes for the Shadow Ball here. Uh, it's going to do less than, you know, anything because of non-stab. But it's now looking like, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to have to waste Red Ice here uh, in, in exchange for, you know, killing the Jolteon. So he ends up going for the Yawn again. That is fine. I guess now I'm taking, now I'm a Sleepy Iceberg. I don't know. But this team is really showing that I have no <laughs> switches into anything. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can deal with. Once Red Ice is gone... Uh, my special defense wall, obviously I don't have anything to switch into any stuff. So at least I'm able to kill the Jolteon, which is good news. I unfortunately did not get the Omni Boost from the Ancient Power because I'm convinced that shit does not exist. Because I swear to God, I'd never get it. But now he gets a free switch on the empty battlefield into the Blastoise. Now this puts me in a bad position because I know this little turtle bastard is going to start shell smashing. And I don't have a great answer for that. So... What I can do is expect him to Shell Smash turn 1, go for the T-Wave. He's likely not going to be Lumberry on this bad boy. So he does go ahead and smash his own shell, which I don't know how the hell that makes him more powerful. You'd think Blastoise would be absolutely fucked up at this point. But now it's an extremely scary sweeper with all those boosts. And he even has the White Herb to bring his defenses back to normal. So I luckily do get the Thunder Wave off, which not doesn't really allow me to outspeed it with the things that I have left particularly. Um, other than like Miss Magius, but I, I'm not going to be able to kill it. However, that does basically put this thing in some pressure where it can potentially get fully paralyzed, and then I can be, you know, in a decent spot. So Berg unfortunately falls asleep. That yawn was extremely shitty because I could start getting some charge beams off and bring it down to range to where Miss Magius can just shadow ball it to death, but at this point, 
I cannot do that. So he ends up going for the Dark Pulse. I'm able to live that pretty nicely because like I said, Berg standing on his little tippy toes out here is an absolute legend when it comes to the special defense. Um, so with the leftover recovery, it's looking like I can take some more and try to wake up and get some charge beams off here. So uh, he ends up staying in, of course. He does get fully paralyzed this turn, and I'm thinking, Reggie, come on, buddy. He is, in fact, still sleepy. So he stays asleep, uh, but I've burnt two turns of sleep, and the leftover recovery is making it look like I can uh, I can take a few attacks here and hopefully try to put this thing into range. So uh, he breaks through the pair that time, throws some hot water at my ass, absolutely melts me. Uh, Scald should honestly be like five times effective on Red Ice, as it does end up killing me, so that sucks some icy balls. But now I figure, okay, here is here is my chance with Farfetch'd. All I need is for this thing to get fully paralyzed here, and I can knock it out with a Leaf Blade or get some big damage. Please, get fully paired, he does not, and he's able to go for the Ice Beam, Farfetch dies, and just like the disappointment of this thing in general, he's not able to do much. So <laughs> um, at that point, I mean, Farfetch wasn't going to be useful in this match anyway, so I figured I'd give it the old college try. But now the only thing I can really do is go into Miss Maggie. I know I, I'm not carrying Thunderbolt coverage on this thing for some damn reason. Uh, I decided Mystical Fire instead of that for stuff like Scizor, and now I'm really wishing I had the T-Bolt. But uh, of course I outspeed, I can go for the Shadow Ball, I know it doesn't kill, but if I get the full pair, there's a chance. I actually get the Defense Drop, which is extremely lucky, and he gets fully paralyzed. So, the luck was not there for the Farfetch'd, but it's looking like the Ghostly Boy is actually coming out on top here. So, I can go for another Shadow Ball. With that Special Defense Drop, it is going to take care of the Blastoise. And now, at this point, I've avoided two extremely scary Sweepers. My guy's coming at me with all of the forces of Gen 1, seriously. Uh, so now he gets a free switch into the Arcanine, who does not enjoy the Stealth Rock, and I don't really enjoy Arcanine in general because I can't really switch into much. Um, I, I mean, I have the, the Golduck, which I pretty much have to do, and I can play my cards right, and the late game sweep can happen from the Miss Maggie. I've whittled the team down. All he has left at this point is going to be this Arcanine, a Mew, and a Sandslash. So the Choice Scarf Ghost can make it happen. He goes for the Flare Blitz, on the gold duck here. Now that's actually decent because it does uh, get some recoil on this thing. Plus with him being paralyzed, I am going to be able to outspeed and hopefully be able to knock out this Arcanine. But my main goal at this point is putting this thing to range where a Shadow Ball kills from the Miss Maggie. That is my top priority. And the Ghost is my win condition and I can make this shit happen. So he decides to switch into Mew, um, who's looking awfully close to the ground and tiny over there. A little weak-ass Mew take this Scald bitch. I do actually end up getting a burn, which is mostly annoying just because of the principle of it, because he synchronizes me. But Golduck has essentially done what he needed to do, and that is forcing out the Arcanine, putting it in range with that Flare Blitz, Flare Blitz recoil to where Miss Maggie can kill it with a Shadow Ball. Now... I'm mostly just worried about the Sand Slash. I know I can two-hit KO the Sand Slash with the Shadow Ball from Miss Maggie, but I just need to know that I can take two attacks from it. So that means I need the Miss Magius to stay at full health. So I stay and go for another Scald. I do outspeed, go ahead and piss on him real quick, and that knocks him down in easy range for Shadow Ball to do it. And I'm thinking I can finish off the rest of this team literally just clicking Shadow Ball. That Arcanine cannot take one, Sand Slash cannot take the, uh, can't take two, he can't kill me in return, and I outspeed everything. So it is time to make it happen, and the battle has all come down to this. Luckily the Mew is in range easily to just die from my Shadow Balls, and there is nothing that can go wrong at this point, because my Ghostly Hat is out here doing the damn thing. So my last Pokemon, my last ditch effort, comes on in looking extra mustardy. <laughs> He says, I know you just ordered a side of mustard, but you're getting a full ass entree today, Mr. Mew. So I go for the Shadow Ball, Choice Scarf, I outspeed everything on the squad. Arcanine cannot extreme speed me, I'm having myself a time. So, balls right to the face, kills the Mew. Now, that is gone. Two Pokemon left, there's Sand Slash, and there's Arcanine. Arcanine comes in on Stealth Rock, can't do shit. In comes the Fire Doggo. Stealth Rock knocks him down to, you know, a decent range, but he has a Citrus Berry which literally ruins my entire plan. The Citrus Berry puts him into range, where unless he gets paralyzed on this turn, my Shadow Ball will not kill, and I am absolutely hacked here. I go for the Shadow Ball thinking maybe there's actually a chance. I did the damage calcs. I'm thinking maybe there's a chance. Shadow Ball, he lives it with 10 HP, breaks through the paralysis, and goes for the Flare Blitz to knock me out. In all of my days, I've never seen such an unfortunate Citrus Berry. I swear to God, that was like the most perfect timing. The Stealth Rock being up absolutely ruined me and it knocked him right into that Citrus range. But that is gonna be the end of the match and the end 
of Generation 4 Wi-Fi battles for me, at least. With Scarlet and Violet coming out, I'm ready to start fresh. That was a fitting battle because that was a super interesting one, and it came right down to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with tons of content with Scarlet and Violet, and I am super excited. I hope you guys are there as well, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.